just go ahead and say it. I believe. I believe. I trust in you, Jesus. Amen. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances or things I could not understand. times and trials, weakness blurs my vision, and my frustration gets so out of hand, and then I am reminded, I've never been forsaken, I've never had to stand one test alone. in me and it's through the fire my weakness is made strong he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered a victories without fighting nor forsake us and sometimes you just got to remind yourself God said and what God says is truth and he said he will never leave us he will never leave us and that fire is what burns off those chains that are holding you down the, those chains that are holding you back that fire will burn them off we need that fire we need we need to be we need to be just put through that just so that those the things that are holding us back can be burned from us so that we can go on and I, I read a devotional the other day, and it was 
that used the scenario of, this, of a woman standing at a cash register and she was searching through her purse for her wallet and she couldn't find it and she was getting so frustrated because she had so much stuff in there she didn't need. So we want to keep our minds clear of those things that we have to dig through to find our peace and to find our hope and, and, and to just find what we need to, to make it through that day. So, so we just got to learn to clean ourselves up and to let God clean those out of us, that anxiety, that in, those insecurities, the doubting. We have to let God clean those out so we can, so we can find our wallets. <laughs> so just give God some praise. Just give him some glory. Just go ahead and clap your hands and just give him all the glory. He's so good. And we're in for it today. God's got something for us today. So let's give Pastor a good hand as he comes. Wow. Anybody excited about today? Anybody believe that God has something awesome for every one of us? Amen. Let's give the praise to him. One more nice hand, if you will. What a blessing. What a blessing they are. We're so thankful for his word and his truth. And maybe seated if you like. Just thankful that God is, he's God right now. The Rooted Ministry was sharing last night. And I asked a little bit of the questions of kind of what they were ministering about. And talking about faith and faith without works is dead. How many know we have faith, but now it's time to work it? Amen. doesn't matter what you have in life. If you don't use it or apply it, it's still as though you didn't have it. So we're beginning right now to allow God to remind us that we are his present generation body. We are his people. We, just as Jesus 2,000 years ago walked the earth in the flesh, he did mighty miracles more than the world could comprehend. And now we're his body. And he said the greater things than he did shall we do. And I think it's about time for us to get on with the, the, the ministry that's at hand. And I believe that God's going to stir our spirits today. It's good that you're in the room with us. We're thankful for every one of you that are working in the kingdom. For those of you going out sharing with someone else, telephone calls, whatever you do, make sure that you reach out every week to somebody that needs a miracle, somebody that needs a healing, somebody that needs encouragement. And don't feel like you're not good enough. We all can do what God calls us to do. We're all fighting battles, but we're all winning wars. We're all fighting and struggling, going through something, but we're also the ones that God is going to use to prove that he's God to this generation. How many of the world is looking at us? They looked at Jesus, some responded, some did not. But how many know they're looking at us and we need to let them have a testimony of Jesus Christ by the way we live, by the way we act, and by the way we keep our faith in the Lord. Aren't you glad the Lord loves you? I want you to go back to the Old Covenant for a moment, if we can, in Second Chronicles. And we're going to, to start at the very beginning of the chapter because this is very significant. For many days, the Lord has had this on my heart and relating the Old Covenant to the New. Some people are bored by the Old Testament, but you have to realize it's stories and, and examples and things that people went through uh, physically. They literally went through these battles, the lion's dens, the, the attacks, so that we in the New Covenant, though we may never see a lion's den or a fire furnace, we know that we will walk through the fires of torment or mental anguish or situational changes in our life that need God to, to intervene for us. So we are His present people. This generation is going to glorify God, I believe, greater than any generation thus far. And we get to be a part of that thing, and I'm excited about it. Just a question I want to pose to you today. Um, what if it takes the same kind of faith to save your family that it took the Israelites to save theirs? What if it took the same kind of faith for me to be a man like Abraham to forsake everyone and everything behind me to take my family into a future promise? What if God was to speak to us like Noah to build an ark? And some say it took nearly 100 years to do that, but how I many know he didn't have skill saws and craftsman tools? These are all very crude instruments with his three sons. They created an ark. Why did he do that? For the saving of his family. And like Noah, we have to also not just begin the ark, but we have to complete the work. We have to continue to be consistent and faithful before God and let people know that we believe in God because we don't stop in the middle of the journey. And some of you need to know that like never before, I'm reinforcing this. Your family's watching you and children are following you and they're going to go where you go. It is a covenant promise. So don't get weary in well-doing. Don't faint along the way. Allow God to use you mightily. And sometimes when we read the scripture, I think we think, well, that's Bible or that's Old Testament. We're going to make it modern application today. In, in 2 Chronicles 20, the first verse says, It happened, it came to pass also after this, that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Also, we know it's Mount Seir. Three nations, three armies came against God's people at once. I want to pose the question and ask you this morning, how many of you know that many of us are fighting more than one battle at a time? 
it's not fair when people gang up on you. Have you ever had anyone gang up on you? They didn't want to just fight you. They wanted to bring all their buddies or their friends and fight. Come on, that's not really fair. And that's what's happening to Israel. They were a very meek people. They were not soldiers and warriors known as such, but they were mainly shepherds. They were a mild-mannered people, if you will. And the Bible said that three armies are coming against them, and there came and some that told Jehoshaphat the king. So there comes a great multitude against thee from beyond this side of Syria. Behold, they, are, they be in Hezan Zantamar, which is in Gedi. And, and Jehoshaphat, look what he did. He's the king. He's the leader of the people. But he feared. How many know that when you first hear a desperate cry or a threat, the first thing you do, your body seems to quiver. You begin to fear. It doesn't mean you're fearful. It means that's the first response. Sometimes we, uh, it's like backing up against the lion's cage at the zoo. You, you hear the lion roar in your ear and you, you think it's over until you look around and find out that it's in a cage. But the first thought is fear. That's natural reaction. So Jehoshaphat feared and the first thing he did, he set himself to seek the Lord. Then he proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. Then Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. I love it because I believe we're living in an hour where people are not just going to try to find answers elsewhere. We're going to go back to seeking God. God is the one that can do it when nobody can. Thank God for the doctors that can do so much and the lawyers that can help in certain areas. But how many of God has got all the time? And even though men may fail in, in having an answer or understanding, God has never had a problem with knowing everything you need for your present circumstance. He's a very smart God. If I'm known for anything, I want to be remembered for the fact that I tell people that God is real smart. I say, well, of course we know that. Well, then sometimes we need to act like we, we make a very heavy statement. We need to recognize that God is all God, all the time, and you can trust Him all the time. Because as the song said a little bit earlier, He'll take you places you don't want to go to get you to where He wants you to be. And He will make sure that you make it. How many looking back over your life, you know it's a miracle after a miracle after a miracle that you're here still after all that you've been through? How many wish you'd have known that instead of fearing while you were going through it? Come on, we read the back of the book and we know that we always win. But I want you to look at this. It's very, very important. They're all seeking God. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. They had built a place for God to dwell. And this is what the king says. Look at it. It looks like questions. Oh, oh Lord, God of our fathers, are, are you not... God in heaven? Anybody ever wonder for a moment? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand you? Are you not our God? The one that drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel. And you're the one that gave it to your, the seed of, of Abraham. He's your friend forever. The question is, isn't that right? Now we dwell in that land and we built you a sanctuary. We want you in our presence. And your name is in the sanctuary. If when evil comes upon us, whether it's a sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, any kind of a problem that comes, whether warriors are coming or there's death threats against us or there's some kind of pestilence in the land to destroy our crops or maybe famine, we stand before this house and we stand in your presence for your name is in this house and we cry unto thee in our affliction. And when we do that, you will hear us and you will help us. I want to say it this morning prophetically. If you're crying out to God, he will hear you and he will help you. He may not come when you want him, but he's already there on time to do it his way. Never think that God is not with you just because he's not doing something that you want. Recognize that if you'll get out of the way, he'll do what he wants. And what God wants you is a whole lot better than what you want for yourself. Can anybody trust him when things are bad and when you don't understand why God is not? Come on. We need to recognize many times in life, God will not come the way you want it so you can develop the faith in him that he's right and he's got a bigger and a better plan. We ask too little of God. We never ask big enough because he's bigger than our asking. The Terry and Trevor were sharing on Tuesday night a bodybuilding time about how great our God. Talking about an Isaiah or, or the prophet came and he said, I, I, I got in the presence of God and, and I recognized that just the train of his glory filled the whole temple. And the example was when a bride walks in and her train follows along her down the aisle, that's a beautiful thing. God's train, his presence fills the whole temple with his presence and with his glory. We've got a great God that created the heaven and the earth and a God that created the mountains and the sea and he's creating everything you'll ever need for the rest of your life can anybody trust him if he's that great 
king is asking the questions. He said, you know, when trouble comes, we're going to cry unto you and you will hear us. But he said, now, right now, we're in a different situation. Right now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, the ones you wouldn't let Israel invade when they had the opportunity and when we came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them. Not when we could have done it our way, you had a better way. Wow. Behold, look, I say how they reward us to cast us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. I want to make this declaration. The enemy cannot take away from you what God has given to you. He will threaten to do that. How many of you ever had the enemy threaten to take your kids, take your family, take your future? No. He is a liar and he'll try to make you believe that he's bigger than God. He will not be able to take us out of our inheritance. Oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. I've had to say this a few times in my life. I, neither do I know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Have you ever been in a circumstance where you just didn't know what to do? You didn't know what was best. Had a lot of good ideas, a lot of good people came and they gave you good thoughts, but how many know sometimes you want to know what God wants? I love this because he said, as all Judah is standing before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. I think we read scripture sometimes like it's a story or a fairy tale. This really happened. All of God's children were standing hand in hand. The little children were wrapped around their legs. They were looking around, hearing the, the threats of war that's coming just a, a day or two away. That our land is going to be destroyed. Our parents are going to be slaughtered. The enemy is going to take over every area of our life. And even the children were probably fearful, so they're hanging on the, like, like little children to their daddy's leg. Can you do something? Can you help us? And so all of a sudden, God recognizing that his children were standing before his presence... They had put him first, and they didn't know exactly how God was going to work. I want you to look at this. This is where we are right now spiritually, most of us in this room. And the Bible said, then upon Jehaziel, you won't read a lot about Jehaziel. He's the son of Zechariah. gives his genealogy. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. He's one of the sons of the Levites, and he's a son of Asaph, one of the writers of the Psalms with David. But so why are you saying that? Because there's something powerful about a song. Anybody ever fight with a song? When you're depressed, the best thing to use against your depression is a song. Because if you're singing, you know you're going to win. Unless you're singing blues, like, woe is me, blues. No, that's not a song. That's depression. But how many know a song is saying God is bigger than this? What a mighty great big. The choir in Kansas City used to sing, we've got a great big wonderful God. Always victorious, always watching over us. What a great big wonderful God. You can't sing that chorus and verse without realizing I don't have to be down. I don't have to stay down. The battle I am in right now is not mine. This battle is the Lord's and he's going to turn it into the biggest testimony of my life. Can somebody say we need to learn how to sing? I think so many times we've leaned on the praise and worship team to sing for us. The musicians to play and then do it for us. No, they're just here to show you how to do it. They're here to sing and talk to God and hope you'll catch on and talk to God in song for yourself. How many of you love to sing during the daytime? Since now we're talking for the service, people get mad at you when you go around singing because they think you're off a little bit. Why are you singing all the time? Why are you always smiling? Why are you always laughing? Because I can. I didn't say I could sing. I said I could laugh. <laughs> how many, everybody can sing. It didn't say it has to be good. It's just to make a joyful noise. Anybody ever make a joyful off-key, out of pitch, out of tune? <laughs> Not supposed to point it, folks, okay? <laughs> Say Jehaziel. He's a descendant of song. Whew. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in the middle of the congregation, and he started talking for God. We have a lot of people that speak in God's behalf that are not talking for God. God should beware of those that presume to use my name and my word. How many of God's not talking? Don't talk. Don't prophesy if God's not saying it. Well, I've been taught you prophesy every day. No. If you notice, most of the major prophets in the Old Covenant only prophesied real heavy prophecy about two or three times their whole ministry. Whether it was desperation or need of direction. How many God can prophesy to you and you don't have to give it to anybody else because it wasn't for somebody else, it was for you? Well, that was real good. You ought to write that down. Say that's a tweetable moment. Look at this. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and this is what he said. And this is where our conflict comes in. Well, well I know him. I, you know, I, I went to school with Jehaziel. I, I, I've known him all. I remember one time he used to eat, you know, mud ice cream and stuff. And, and he was a little bit crazy. He just, he was just that kid. And all of a sudden the Spirit of the Lord, how many when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, it turns you into somebody else. 
It doesn't really change you as much as it lets you change people's mind because you allow the God that's inside of you to speak through you to set people free. So the Spirit of the Lord came upon this unknown young prophet, this, this singer, if you will, and he said, I want you to hear, hearken all Judah and you inhabitants. If you dwell around Jerusalem and you also are leader, our King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. Wow. How many of you know it's a good thing when God is talking to you? Because when God is talking, he talks because he loves you. He talks because he's, you're special to him. Oh, we've talked about a God that's a big God sitting high and wanting to squash people like a bug because they mess up or frown. No, how many? he is a long-suffering God. If he was not long-suffering, we wouldn't still be here. So when God is talking to you, he's trying to remind you, I'm right here, right now. I know what you're going through. I care. I love you. I already sent my son to redeem you. Now let's take advantage of the blood. Let's take advantage of the power of the cross. And let's walk out of this defeat and walk into victory. Would somebody say, God is talking to me? Thus saith the Lord. That's what it means. God is talking. This is what God wants to say. I underlined the word you. Why? Because now it's about you. Not supposed to point, but I'm pointing today. Why? Because when I'm pointing at you, my thumb is coming back. God is talking to us. And I am in a battle, and I'm going to win this battle. How many glad that the battle is not yours if you give it to God? God is saying through a young man, be not afraid. Wow. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just walk over to somebody that's going through the terror and the trauma of their loss? They're going through the threat of the job and somebody's dying and somebody's in trouble and somebody's been in an accident and somebody's in danger and you could just walk over and say, don't be afraid. And they would quit being afraid. Why do we have to analyze it and figure it out before we can stop being afraid? God said with three wars coming against them, three armies from every direction coming, he said, God says to you, be not afraid and don't be dismayed. What is dismay? The total and complete lack of courage. When you're at the place where you lost it. Anybody ever just lose it for a minute? Probably shouldn't testify about that. How many know there's times that we just shiver, we, we shake, we wonder, and then all of a sudden our, our faith is gone. He said, don't be afraid or dismayed because of the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours at all, but it's God's. If you realize that God's already got this, then you don't have to fight. When you realize you're, can I said, I heard the song this morning, and it blessed me because God is saying, you don't win a battle without fighting, but you don't use your fist, you use your faith. <laughs> and most of the time, you're not fighting other people, you're fighting yourself. Anybody ever fight yourself and lose? Well, how does that work? Well, you fought yourself and you won. In other words, you conquered what the enemy's lying, saying to you, and you believe what God said. Anybody glad we can fight with ourselves and nobody has to see that battle? Say it again. Don't be afraid. Don't lose your courage. Just because there's a great big multitude of problems out there about to kill you, don't, don't even worry about it. The battle is not yours. It's God's. And then he says something profound. He says, tomorrow, sleep on this. Go home and get some rest, and then tomorrow, get up early, go down against them. Wait, 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 wait. I've got three armies, and I don't even have a sword, and I don't have a shield, and I don't know how to fight, and, and you're telling me just to go out against them tomorrow? I need to fast for about a month on this. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the cliff, Ziz, and you're going to find them at the end of the brook and be before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in the battle. I'm going to say that again. You don't have to fight a battle if God's got it. Even though you have to walk through a process, it's done. God calls it done when it starts because he knows the outcome. And he wants you to get on and in on what he knows so that you don't have to be afraid during the duration of the battle. Can I get one amen right there? And then he said, you will not need to fight in the battle, but sit yourselves. Anybody ever have to just sit down? Have you ever had anybody just give you time out? I think right now God is giving a whole lot of us time out you're griping complaining worrying fearing stressing sweating doing all the stuff and god is saying sit in the corner why because you're gonna sit there and watch me work in your behalf in other words god is saying will you get out of the way right now your fear and your worry is stopping me from being able to do a great thing because i'm not going to get involved in your fear and worry that's not what i want to be a part of i don't want to be in league with that so he said go and as you go out against them you know where i'm going to tell you to go you won't have to fight but sit down or stand still it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you can just stop worrying and fearing. Uh, can I tell you this? The hardest thing in the world is just to stand still while the enemy is coming from three directions trying to kill you. 
That takes faith. It takes faith just to stand there. Anybody could fight and pick up rocks and try something. God said, no, don't, don't, don't try to fight. Just sit or stand. Just whatever vantage points you want. Watch this battle. But they're coming at me. They're getting closer. And God says, I know all that, but I, I've got this. Isn't it funny that it's God's battle only because we can't do anything anyway? Amen? You have a brain cancer. Well, let me fight. Man, it's not going to help anything. Just sit down and stand still and see the glory of God. I mean, real faith doesn't make you work and flex your muscles. It makes you be still. One of the greatest scriptures in the Bible said, be still and know that I'm God. How many sometimes find it real hard when war is around you just to be at peace? See, God doesn't come into your warfare. He comes into your peace. You want God to show up? Believe Him. It doesn't show that you believe Him when you're having a fit. Calling everybody, crying, yelling, screaming, getting mad. At you. That doesn't show faith. Real faith is when you just stand still. Sit down. See the salvation of the Lord with you. Hold you to Jerusalem. Fear not. Don't be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, okay. We got three battles coming, three armies coming. They're almost here. And you're telling me to go stand on the edge of the cliff and just watch this and be at peace? Look at me. You better know that's God. Isn't that one of our biggest problems is God speaks to us, but we don't know for sure it's God. And we don't know it's God because it's too big. We've never heard anything that big before. And is God big enough to do something bigger than he's ever done before? And, and you don't know God. I'm not fighting one battle. I'm not fighting just physically. I'm fighting in every area of my life. I've got three battles going on. And you're telling me and my kids to go stand and watch the battle when those soldiers are coming at us. The reason we don't know that God is fighting is because you can't see God. But you can see the enemy. You know how the enemy works? You can see the enemy, but you can't see God. I gave the example one time. The reason I believe David wasn't afraid of giant is because he had that rock in his hand. That rock was the type of Jesus Christ, the stone the builder had rejected, but he accepted it. You know, if you get a little bitty stone and put it real close to your eyes, you can't see the giant in front of you. So what are you looking at? Are you looking at the promise that's right here or the giant that's out there? Amen. You might say, well, the, the, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you right now. Let the Lord come a little closer and you'll see him and not the enemy. Realize God just spoke to you and said, tomorrow I'm going to have this. Tomorrow I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to be afraid. Tomorrow I'm going to fight this battle once and for all. That's when faith with works says I'm going to do something that works. Is that okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do whatever God says. But today he told me just go down tomorrow and watch the battle. In other words, get over there in the, the bleachers and watch the, the Ohio State. Are you still with me? Play their opponent, Michigan, which is always going to lose according to the word that I've been hearing. Okay, we're not there yet? Okay. You ever notice anybody in the bleachers doesn't fight on the battlefield? We watch. You'll get that about halfway down to White Castle. Why? Because God didn't place you on the battlefield to do the fighting. He said, I got the fight. I just want you to applaud. I want you to praise. You be on the, the sidelines in the bleachers giving celebration. Learn how to sing a song of victory. Look at this very closely. You won't need to fight, but just sit down and you're going to see the glory of the Lord because God is going to be with you. What does the king do? He bows his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah, that's called the leaders of the praise and worship, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, God's people, they fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Why would you fall on your face when God said, go down to the battlefield and just watch? Because you know God is talking to you. And if you know God is saying, don't worry, just go to the edge of the battlefield and give me some praise and worship, and you know your children are not going to die, the threat against your family is not going to be valid your health is going to restore God is saying now I have spoken to you and the king fell on his face thanking God that God has spoken to them and all the people of God believe the word was God say the word was God and the word was there I love it when you start out the Bible it says in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God aren't you glad that the word is still God and God is giving you a word and he's still right here he became in John he became flesh and dwelt among us the Lord is not seven heavens away he is right here in this room in this body and in yours and he is a very present help fighting your battle winning your war and all you've got to do is learn to praise the Lord in the middle of your battle people begin to fall on their face and worship God and the Levites 
The children of the Kohathites, he gives all the, the different descriptions of the local ones are there that are loud voices are crying out to God in praise and thanksgiving. So, so what did they do when God spoke and they knew it was God? They rose up early in the morning. You know, sometimes when you're fighting a battle and you're having to go in for surgery and they don't know if you're going to make it out of surgery, you probably wouldn't want them to do it early in the morning. You'd probably want them to give you a good night's rest and then you wait as long as you can before the knife comes. Early in the morning, they went to the wilderness of Tekoa as they went forth. Jehoshaphat stood and he said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. He's reminding them today of what they heard yesterday. I want everybody to look at me for a minute. This word was given in Scripture on a yesterday. I'm here like Jehoshaphat to tell you, I'm reminding you of what God is saying to you in this room right now. Anybody need a reminder? Anybody know when you're hearing the wrong and feeling the wrong and seeing the wrong and the threats are against you? He is simply saying, let me remind you, all of you in Judah, all of you praises and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. If you believe in the, the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Can I paraphrase that? If you believe in your God, the word that was given yesterday is going to be established in your life today. Why? Because you believe. Not fight, not struggle, not think about it, but believe. If you believe in the Lord your God, this will be established. And if you believe his prophet, what the prophet said yesterday, so shall you prosper. That's been turned into a prosperity message. It's not a prosperity message. It's a victory message for every area of your life. It's so that when you believe in God, what God told you on your yesterday, some of you as mama's knee, it was sometime a preacher years ago, or a testimony came in children's church, whatever it was, you've already heard a long time ago on a yesterday of your life. And the Lord is reminding you right now on this Sunday morning that what God said to you is real. And on this day, if you believe the word of the Lord your God, it will be established. If you believe the prophetic word from the prophet on yesterday, Day, you will prosper in the situation so when they had consulted the people he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness very strange line right now that is important right now and he said he called the singers to come up first and they were told to praise the beauty of God's holiness Wow and the Bible said they went out before the army got an army back there you know they're not known as army but they're an army they're all ready and and God said before the army comes I want all you folks that sing I want you to go first all the singers and dancers and praisers I want you to go go face the army singers don't face them with a sword face them with a tambourine and a dance and, and a hallelujah and a great big wonderful you know the only weapon that really works for health situations family salvation it's always believing in God. If you believe, you're going to act it out by maybe a song or a smile or whistling or laughing. And people can tell if you have faith. Amen. Walking around worried, they're not going to think it's true. But if you're always smiling and saying, you know, God is so good. He's awesome, God. They'll believe you. I think God is good. I don't know if God is good. I don't know if he's ever been God. I don't know if he even loves me. That's not going to help anybody. Look at me, God doesn't show up in that attitude. He shows up in the praise of his people. Can you imagine what the people are thinking about this king? We're going to battle, and the first ones on the battlefield to take the brunt of the first wave is going to be the singers? Amen. That was a musical note from heaven right there saying, I affirm that that was right. Can anybody sing before your battle? What's your first tendency when trouble comes? Sing. See, this kingdom of God is different than ours. And, and the natural would say, well, God, when you finally fight this battle and my kids come home from war and nobody dies, then I'll praise you. The Lord said, it didn't work like that. Praise me first. Amen. So whatever you want me to do, praise me for it. Yes. If you want me to heal you, praise me and I'll get in that praise and I'll heal you. Yes. Well, well, I'll be glad to praise you when you finally prove that you're really God. He's already God. And he's not wanting you to find out later. He wants you to know he's God when you're going into the fire, when you're going into the lion's den. And we need to realize he didn't send the singers say, well, when the battle is over and we go collect gold and silver off all the people that are dead in the battlefield, then we'll sing a song. No, you sing first. And if you can put God first and sing first and believe first, trust him before you get your miracle. That's when the answer begins to come. So really, we've got this thing all reversed. We want to praise God when the battle's over. Oh, we should do that, too. 
Because as soon as one battle is over, there cometh another. How do there will always be another one? So you ought to keep on praising God before the battle, at the end of the battle, because the end of the battle is praising Him before the next. And the victory will always be living in your life from victory to victory and blessing to blessing and glory to glory. Can somebody just say, that sounds real weird, but I know it's true. Stand still. Isn't it hard just to not do anything when you're threatened? I've been around here long enough to know that it is true. Sing this song. What is the song? Praise the Lord. His mercy endures forever. That song all through Scripture is given when we need to praise Him first. Praise the Lord. His mercy is forever. Praise Him now. Praise Him first. Praise Him before anything else. Praise the Lord. Why? His mercy is going to endure for all generations. If you realize God is waiting for some of us to praise Him so He can show up and live in our praise and manufacture a miracle. Uh, and when they begin to sing, <laughs> boy, I wish some folks would get that verse. When we finally get it in our mind that we're going to sing. When did God show up? When? When they begin to sing. When we can begin to celebrate what we say we believe. You know, we've got to learn to believe in the dark what we say we believed in the light. Praise the Lord. His mercy is forever. And when they begin to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments again, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come out against Judah, and they were smitten. Why? Because God is saying, I'm going to receive your praise. I don't want anything to stop your praise. So while you're praising me, I know you were going to fight, but I don't want you to stop singing and praising, and I want you to keep on worshiping me. So while you're praising me, I'll go ahead and do your battle. I'll do it for you. Don't stop singing. Don't stop praising because I'm enjoying your praise. So whatever you were going to do, I'll do it for you. If you were going to fight, I'll fight for you. If you were going to do something else, go ahead and praise me and let me fight this battle and win this war. So the victory is in your song. It doesn't sound like it's a good way to conquer, but it's in the song. You know, when the Israelites are standing on the edge of the battlefield and they're hearing the singers go out there before anything happened, do you think maybe somebody in the back of their mind is saying, I wonder if that Jehaziel really is of God? Uh, we worship, we fell on our face, we believed God was God yesterday, but it's kind of hard for me to believe that God's going to do this. One thing I want you to note this morning, God always shows up the greatest when it's hard to believe. Have you ever had a time your kids are all doing great? Family's doing great? Kind of changes and then everything is wrong and they're addicted and bound and maybe going to die. The doctors have given a bad report. Why, why do we stop praising? Because of what we see and hear. God wants us to praise Him when it's hard to believe. Why? Because if we want Him to show up, He lives in praise. Why do we forget that? Because the enemy wants us to forget that. The Bible said the Israelites had come out of slavery for 430 years, and they were so excited because now they're all healed, and they have the wealth of Egypt carrying it around with them, heading toward the Promised Land. Just shortly after that, they get to the Red Sea, and they look back, and Pharaoh's army is coming at them, and the Red Sea's in front of them, and they're either going to get killed or drown. And Moses said, just stop griping, complaining, just shut up. Everybody said, just be still. God loves it when we're still. Amen. I've watched people go into a hospital room and just going through all kinds of contortions and antics. And then all of a sudden somebody just walks in and prays a soft, loving, powerful prayer. Which one do you think works? We need the right attitude of praising. The Bible said they were praising the Lord and they were singing, praise the Lord, His mercy. My God's mercy endures forever. And when they begin to sing, the Lord said ambushments. I don't know a lot about ambushments, but I remember watching the cartoons, and then I would watch the... Anybody remember the cowboy days? Remember the Indians would ambush you white folks? And we always lost because we didn't know how to ambush well. Just trying to help two people in the room. But the Lord set ambushments against Mount Seir, Ammon, and Moab, and they were all smitten. You might like it when you finally look around and all your enemies defeated. 
The Bible said the children of Ammon and Moab, they stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly destroyed them. When they had made an end of destroying the inhabitants of Mount Seir, everybody helped destroy each other. <laughs> so you go out to the battlefield, and it's funny because your enemies all automatically start getting mad at each other. They start fighting each other, and before long, they're all dead. All your enemies are out there killing each other. You're sitting there watching and saying, Go! Hallelujah! Fight! <laughs> And that's physical, but how about spiritually, if you let God, he'll work against your opposition and he'll cause your opposition to work against your other opposition. And when it's all said and done, your, your problem and your hindrance and your opposition, they start working together, killing each other. And you look around and say, now I don't have any more battle because my battle's already killed itself and my victory is getting ready to happen. And I didn't have to do anything but sing my song, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is God. How many of his mercy endures forever? And so what we need to understand is not just today, but every day. Get up in the morning singing praise to God before you go in and, and, and scrub your teeth or, or get them out of the bowl or whatever you do. And before you wash your face and before you get yourself ready for the day, you need to go to the bathroom or wherever you keep your stuff and praise God. Sing to Him. I don't get out of bed and my first thing is telling God how great He is and how much I love Him and how wonderful He is. That's why His presence can go before me is because I encourage myself in the Lord and I remember what a mighty God. I serve. Can everybody say this with me? God's going to fight your battle. So Judah came to the watchtower in the wilderness and they looked into the multitude and behold they were dead bodies and nobody escaped. Joshua and the people came to take away the spoil of them and they found among them abundance of riches and with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves until they could carry no more of the jewelry away and they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. On the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka. For there they blessed the Lord before the name of the same place was called in the valley of Baraka is called that unto this day. After they got finished picking up the spoil of war of what God had done for them, they started singing again and praising again. I think it's always in time to praise God. Whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation, it's all right just to stop what you're doing and give praise to God. When you stand before the doctor and they say all this stuff, just take a little time to start singing and praising God. Come on, you get a report that you don't like. You look around and see things about your loved ones you don't want to see and feel things you don't want to feel. You don't need to worry about it and stress out. Just take time to lift up your hands and say, I've got a great, big, wonderful God that's bigger than this valley. He's bigger than this mountain. He's bigger than my opposition. And he's going to bring glory to his name. And I'm not going to stand in his way, but I'm going to praise the Lord. His mercy endures forever. Can everybody say that line with me? Praise the Lord. His mercy endures forever. There's a promise in the Word of God that we need to hold on to. Many times God has a way of working that we don't like. He usually causes a promise to come followed by a delay. I know we hate that. Because we want an instant. Anybody want instant gratification? What if you pull up to McDonald's and say, I want a Big Mac, hold the pickle, hold the lettuce, and they say, well, we're not going to tell you when this is going to be ready, but just pull over to the side and wait for a few days. Because we know you don't need it right now. <laughs> I just lost two more. <laughs> but see, when God tells you there's a delay, it's because he has something planned. He may have other people that have to get involved. So the promise is fulfilled. And it's completed with not just you, but for everybody that needs a blessing. Because when the Israelites started praising God, God didn't fight just one of their battles. He fought all of them. And what were they doing? They were singing. I've never heard anybody say this, but I got a feeling the praise team was singing louder after Mount Seir was wiped out and now Moab and Ammon are taking themselves out. I got a feeling the singers are really encouraged about this time. You know, if we'll sing a little more, we don't have to get shot. <laughs> you sing a little more, we won't have to get cut. We want to get an arrow in our body. So let's sing a little louder. I'm just going to tell you right now, if you're tired of arrows coming against you and swords and destruction, sing a little louder. Praise a little earlier. Praise a little longer. Let his presence fill your life and let victory and completion take its place. All through scripture, the Lord is saying, I am not going to give up. I'm going to praise him. Would you say this with me? When it's hard to believe, that's the most important time to believe. Can you imagine our dear brother Job? He's in scripture for a purpose. His property's gone. His children are dead. Thousands of animals and servants, everyone's dead. 
He has nothing. His wife is there saying, just curse God and die, and his friends are blaming him. He's sitting with boils covered from his head to his toe. He grabbed a pot from the house that had broken when everything went bad, scrapes the heads off the boils. Agony you can't even imagine. And his wife said, just curse God and die. But he didn't do that. He, he sang a weird song. I know my Redeemer lives. Did he understand why he had to go through that? No. Nope. But he didn't lose his focus. He didn't stop praising God. The Bible said in all that happened to Job, he didn't charge God foolishly. That's hard. Job is the first character written about in Scripture. I know we have the, the Pentateuch, but we also realize the first writers collectively wrote about this man. Whew. Richest man in the East, and now he's broke. All of his children are dead. His wife is critiquing his life. His friends are blaming him. He has nothing left. And in the middle of the ash pile of his loss, he is saying, even if God would to slay me, yet I will trust him. Whew. Say it with me. Yet I will trust him. Why? Because he has a plan to multiply your life double for whatever he removes. I don't think we're there yet. Several thousand years later, we're not quite there yet. I want to be able to say like Job, though God, if that was his plan to destroy my life, if that glorifies him, I won't understand that, but I'm still going to trust him. Anybody think we got some growing to do? These are hard scriptures. When it's hard to believe, Job praised God. Can you imagine a man with boils all over his mouth and his face, all over his body, praising God? The enemy knows I can't conquer this guy. This is God's kid. He will not give up his faith. I don't think anybody in this room is going to have to go through anything near that. Amen. But I made up my mind, whatever the attack, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I know my Redeemer lives. And though the skin worms devour my body, can you imagine Job is actually, according to some historians, the skin worms are already starting to come alive in his rotten flesh. He said, though the skin worms devour my body while I'm still in my flesh, I'm going to see the glory of God. Don't give up in the middle of the battle. Don't give up in the middle of the fight. Don't stop singing when it's hard to believe. That's when you need it the most. How many wish you hadn't come till next week, but you know I'm telling you the truth. Say it. I'm going to rejoice in my pain till my pain turns into victory. I'm going to rejoice over my loved ones until every one of them come home to the kingdom. I want you to bow your head for just a moment if you would. What if, what if it was my lot or your lot in life to become like Job? Can we rejoice? Can we trust? All through scripture, one of my favorite words is yet I will. Yet I will rejoice because like Job, I know my Redeemer lives. Something in this room today that is significant. There's some of you that have been struggling and some trying many things to get out of your valley and out of your battle and against the threats that are in your life. But please, the Lord is simply saying, and I am going to be to you your Jehaziel that says you don't need to worry. You don't need to be afraid because the Lord is saying this is not your battle. This is to bring glory to the Lord and honor to his name. Now I'm going to ask you to do this together before anyone else does a thing or moves. I'm going to ask you to look into your own mind and say this. Can I believe God in my circumstance right now? I got a prophecy in my yesterdays about great things in my future, but right now, can I sing my song on my battlefield right now? I hope the answer is yes. If it's not, let God fix that. Let God help you with that. Let God restore that. Let's everybody stand to our feet for just a moment if we can. Now I'm going to ask you to begin to celebrate in your spirit, saying, God, I know that you have the power. And when I have a hard time believing, when I have a hard time understanding, I'm still going to trust in the Lord. Can I believe God's word even when it may be death? When I might not get my way? Can I trust God when I don't know what God is doing and why? Can I still trust Him? 
facing three battles, do I believe that God is bigger than my opponent? Do I believe that God is going to turn this around to get great glory out of my praise and bring great victory to my life? Come on, just for a moment, if you can, look into your heart and ask yourself, God, where do I need to be strengthened in my faith? Do I need to know how to sing in my troubled time? Do I need to be reminded every day that I need to sing a new song and give you honor and praise and glory? Because my battle today is really not mine once I give it to God. But the victories have already begun to be mine by the power of Holy Ghost intervention. Just begin to praise Him for just a moment. The Spirit is speaking. Don't turn Him away and don't walk into your own understanding. Just begin to trust Him that He's desiring a song from you when it's hard to believe. Make up your mind to believe. We trust you. Thank you, Lord. We'll just give God a little bit of praise. Let Him know that you do believe Him. Give Him a little praise. Let, you, let Him know you do trust Him. Verbalize your faith. Give me a new song, Father. Give me a new song, Father. Been weary. Weary though I'm doing well. Give me a new song. Give me a peace that I've never had before. Give me revelation knowledge of where I am and why. Trust you, Lord. presence is already on your battlefield. Come on in. Come on in. Fill the air. 
hand over your heart and say along with me, I believe, even though right now it is hard to believe for that one situation, that one special bound person that I love so much. Father, you promise for family salvation. And right now, they're being attacked in their mind, in their soul, in their body. But these three wars will not conquer them because I made up my mind starting today. I'm going to sing on this battlefield and you're going to fight the battle. You're going to win the war. You're going to go in my behalf. Do for me what I could never do for myself. I expect tomorrow and all the tomorrows of my life to pick up the jewels and the treasures and the spoil of my war. What the enemy meant for evil will prosper my future. Save my children, my loved ones, and my family. I claim that in the name of Jesus. Starting now, ministering spirits, angels, go forth with conviction, with a reminder, and with a new promise for everyone I love as I lay them upon the altar for divine intervention from the God that cannot fail. I claim it now in Jesus name in Jesus name let's lift holy hands and just begin to sing the hallelujah and the praise and the worship great is our God and greatly to be praised great is our God and greatly greatly to be praised thank you Jesus over if you will and put your hand upon Sierra. Lisa, reach over if you will and put your hand on Sharon. Steve, if you will, reach over and take a hold of Bill's hand. Cindy, reach over and grab a hold of the ladies. Everybody, if you will, just reach over and touch the one beside you and say, I'm here to hold you. I'm here to pray. I'm here to remind you of the promise of God. Yesterday, you heard God speak something that you needed to hear. In the tomorrows of your life, the battle will rage only to bring forth victory. I will remind you of the word of the Lord. And together, we will reap the spoils of war, our families, our health, and our future. Nothing missing, nothing broken, no more loss, only completed victory in the name of Jesus. Father, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how far it's progressed. I speak restoration. Renew our youth like the eagle. Restore the years that the caterpillar has taken away. Beauty for our ashes, the oil of joy for our horn. We claim it, and because we believe it, we're going to begin to sing a song. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you may be on the battlefield, but the song of the Lord is right now saying... Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome in my battle zone. You're welcome in my warfare. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. His mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. His mercy endures forever. The Word says the mercy of the Lord endures for all generations. If Job could praise Him in his pain, I can praise Him. If the disciples and Paul and Silas could praise him in the prison after being beaten, I can praise the Lord. They're always followed by deliverance and my blessing will also come. Deliverance will come if I sing my song to you. Praise you with a perfect praise. With a faith in the God that cannot fail, I call it done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, say it together, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. Sing it one more time. Play it if you will, gentlemen. Sing along, saints.
I'm, I'm going into this battle singing. This battle is not mine, so I'll sing my way into my perfect victory. Three areas of attack, mind, soul, and body. I will come forth as pure gold. Like Job, I know my Redeemer lives. And when this battle is over, God is going to restore. Job not only got double portion restoration, but God honored him with long life to see his children and his great-grandchildren. The threat is over today because the song of the Lord takes over. The promise of the Father has its right away in our life. In Jesus' name. Could one person just say it out loud and drown everybody else out? I believe God. Even though it's hard to believe, I've chosen to believe. I've chosen to praise Him. And I'm going to sing me a song. I'm going to bug everybody around me. Because I'm not going to stop singing until the battle is over. I may sing halfway off key, but I'm still going to sing until the victory is complete. Can we clap our hands and praise Him because the victory is ours by divine intervention in the name of Jesus. Whew. How many of you got this? How many still wonder if Jehaziel really knew what he's talking about? God already told you what he's going to do because he knows what he's talking about. And now he's saying, believe in the word of the Lord your God and it will be established in you. Believe in the prophetic word and so shall you prosper. I think we need to clap our hands because victory has entered this house today. And the promise of the Lord is upon our spirit.